Every new folding phone that launches is good news for those of us who believe that foldables are the future. Competition drives down prices. It spurs innovation. It increases choice. So I'm happy the Mimex Fold from Xiaomi exists, even if right now I can't think of anyone here in the States I'd actually recommend it to. The Mi Mix Fold is Xiaomi's first folding phone, but if you feel like you've seen it before, I can't say you're wrong. From the tongue depressor aspect ratio to the large capsule-like hinge, right down to the T-caps at top and bottom of the inner display, it's a two-year-old Samsung Galaxy Fold in everything but name. Oh, and the size. If the Galaxy Fold 2 is a gold bar in your pocket, the Mi Mix Fold is a brick of plutonium or something. Larger in every dimension than the Samsung and heavier, not just than the Fold 2, but also Huawei's Mate X2 we took a look at last week. Considering the monster scale, it's kind of impressive Xiaomi managed to restrain itself to a slogan this small on the hinge. Though I think I speak for most people when I say, manufacturers, please stop putting your tacky taglines on four-figure phone hardware. To be fair to Xiaomi, the added size does come in handy. The four speakers aren't quite as loud as the pair on the Fold 2, but they do produce a richer, deeper sound. There's more room for exciting camera experiments, which we'll get to on the pizza crawl in a minute. The battery is the largest ever fitted to a folding phone at over 5,000 milliamp hours, with a fast 67 watt charger in the box as well. And of course, the whole reason the book type foldable category exists is to get you as close to a tablet sized screen as possible. I've been using a foldable like this every workday for about 15 months, and nearly every one of those days has been made easier at some point by having a bigger canvas than most phones. That canvas is the indisputable star of the Mi Mix Fold, a full 8-inch diagonal with a high resolution and competitive max brightness compared to the Galaxy Fold 2. Now, I do miss the articulating hinge from the Samsung. Like the Huawei, the Xiaomi is an open or closed affair with no in-between. And yes, there is a pronounced crease. I might also have taken points off for Xiaomi's use of flexible plastic versus Samsung's ultra-thin glass, but if you'll recall, I just had to send my Fold 2 in for repair thanks to a fracturing of that glass material. While that repair cost me zero dollars and was completed in seven days, I'm still no closer to trusting ultra-thin glass in the long term. I'll share the story of my warranty replacement in the upcoming long-term review of the Fold 2. Where the added scale doesn't work for the Mi Mix Fold is mostly here on the cover display. Oh, it's been stretched to fill as much of the vertical axis as possible, but because the chassis is so narrow, you still end up with a screen slimmer than that of the Fold 2. Useful for scrolling long lists, but cumbersome for typing and video calls, which you have to take out here, because as with the Huawei Mate X2, there's no internal selfie camera. While we're on missing features, you won't find wireless charging under either glass or ceramic backplate, nor can you use the cover display as a viewfinder to use the main camera as a selfie shooter, as you can with Samsung's foldables. Let's talk about those cameras. They're clustered into a typical triple array around back with a very atypical addition, a liquid lens. This exotic accessory, first teased for smartphones over 15 years ago, makes it possible for a single lens to switch between two focal lengths, in this case from a 3x telephoto to a super macro for mega close-ups. I'm fascinated by this technology, but it's not like we haven't seen cameras doubling up before. Many phones use their ultra-wide cameras as macro shooters these days, even if it's not a liquid lens making that possible. So while the technology holds real promise for the future, it didn't meaningfully improve my camera experience. Now, I have more to say about that experience, but as I sometimes do, I'd like to take a break from talking and let you experience the Mi Mix Fold cameras without commentary. Join me on a mini road trip review with my friend David Kogan of The Unlocker as we use a phone that folds to photograph some food that folds. Oh, yes, sorry, sorry, yeah, that's 
we're out here. It's just a habit, really. It's a free. Consume. Cheers. Cheers. A substrate of cheese, on top of which is kind of like a gelatinous continent of cheese. Gelatinous con continent, also um, my code name on the, on the CB radio. Although that it's four o'clock and we're only on our second slice of pizza. Told you. I wish you hadn't kept me waiting so long this morning. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> this is the best decision I've ever made. <laughs> Can you just gnaw off a corner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing? Please do. Better than cardboard. A little. <laughs> <laughs> Good slice of pizza that has now been soaked in grease inside a pizza box. Look at them dribbles. <laughs> <laughs> My lawyers tell me I have to tell you not to attempt such a pizza crawl, as it may take years off your life. And anyway, as I told you, I have a few things to say about these cameras. Snapping side by side with the Galaxy Fold 2, I almost never preferred the Xiaomi's output thanks to the color science differences. Yes, Samsung still oversaturates its colors to an extent, but Xiaomi seems to intentionally mute them. Not in a way that preserves authenticity, but in a way that deadens the reality of those moments as I recall them. When you switch over to video, filming through that telephoto camera on the Mi Mix Fold is almost painful, and I have some speculation as to why. See, despite using Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 as the brains of the phone, Xiaomi is using its own image signal processor here, called the Surge C1. That's apparently because it was necessary to control the liquid lens. But the later the day got, the more obvious Xiaomi's inferior processing became as the light ran low. All in all, this camera is not one I'd care to use again, liquid or no. Now, I spilled a large amount of ink detailing all the software shortcomings I found in this phone, but really, th there's, there's not that much reason to go into it. Because as frustrating as I find Xiaomi's custom user interface with its scaling issues and sloppy design and all that Apple aping, it simply wasn't designed for the international market. If you even know this phone exists, you probably already know you'll need to do a lot of work if you want it to even remotely approximate a device you're used to. You can't use Nova Launcher, for example, because the phone literally does not allow you to. You need to dig deep into the settings to make sure you actually get notifications from your apps, because the phone will put them into some kind of deep hibernation otherwise. And what's annoying is that kind of aggressive power management isn't even necessary, because this thing is easily a two-day smartphone. The only way I could kill it in less than a workday's time was to film with it all day on that pizza tour. And the feature I was most eager to try out, that mini PC desktop mode, doesn't seem to be enabled on retail units yet. But hey, at least it's possible to run Google Mobile services on this thing, which is more than I can say for Huawei. Again, I'm glad the Mi Mix Fold exists, because more players in the foldable space is a great thing. Also, Xiaomi deserves a shout out for treating buyers with the respect they're due by including a charger and a free case in the box. And with an approximate price of 1500 US dollars, this is the most affordable full-scale foldable yet. Great news for those in the markets for which it's intended and a needed counterbalance to Huawei's expensive Mate X2. But if you live in the US, you can buy a Samsung Galaxy Fold 2 right now for about $1600 not even counting any trade-ins. If you can't wait until the summer to see what Samsung's third-generation foldables entail, buying a Galaxy Fold 2 is probably what you should do. Special thanks to David Kogan at The Unlocker for subjecting his body to the same carbo-coma I put mine through. Definitely his idea. Not my idea. <laughs> You can find many more comparison photos and a lot more footage from that pizza crawl in his Mi Mix Fold Real World Test, which I will link below. This video was produced following one week with a Mi Mix Fold unit purchased by Mr. Mobile, thanks to Ben Sin of XDA Developers for connecting me with a vendor who was able to rush shipment from Hong Kong. As always, Xiaomi was given no editorial input nor an early preview of this content, and it did not furnish any compensation in exchange for its production please hit that free subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos like this on YouTube.
Until next time, thanks for watching, and remember to stay safe and mask up when you're around others as you stay mobile, my friends. I just, we have to insist we leave on account of um... <laughs> Okay, okay. Ah, ah, ah. See how it is. You really walked into that one. Physically, yeah. Folks.